Welcome to the Great African Leadership Series where we feature great inspirational speeches and quotes from African leaders. So let me state with the clearest affirmation that Ghana has not offered a military base and will not offer a military base to the United States of America. Last week, at the height of the furore triggered by the U.S.-Ghana Military Cooperation Agreement, a good friend of mine came to caution me on what he called the hazards of this democracy thing. He told me, just in case I needed reminding, that my predecessor as president, who had also been democratically elected, had chosen to avoid any possible controversy by signing and keeping secret some agreements. So why did I not follow this precedent instead of exposing the nation to all the hazards of the past few days? My friend, no doubt, had a good point. Indeed, I acknowledge that there are many very well-meaning citizens who would have preferred the peaceful process of arguments reached behind closed doors to the furore of the past few days. Yet far from being daunted, I take what has happened not to be symptomatic of the hazards of democracy, but of a show of the strength of democracy in action. We're seeing being displayed before our very eyes, not the triumph of disorder, but the value of openness in governance and of the need, the crucial need, for the people to be fully and accurately informed. I was fully aware of how such agreements had been handled in earlier administrations. But I decided that under my watch, any such agreements should be subject to the appropriate scrutiny of the people's representatives in Parliament in consonance with the requirements of accountable governance and the teachings of the Constitution. But for this decision to be open about this agreement, how else would we, the people of Ghana, have ever known that for several decades, Ghana has had defense and security cooperation collaborations with the United States of America? How else would we have known that in some instances, we have provided them with facilities for the movement of personnel and equipment to help some of our nation, our neighbors, who are facing security and health challenges. And how else would we have exposed the unspeakable hypocrisy of the fraternity of some frontline politicians who make a habit of running with the hares and hunting with the hounds, who secretly wallow in the largesse of the United States of America, while at the same time promote anti-American sentiments to a populist constituency. Submitting this agreement to open scrutiny now allows us to clear the unhealthy fog that has clouded our relations with the United States of America. We respect the age-old norms of international diplomacy that when a country is accorded privileges and concessions to another, these are not removed or altered by a successor government, unless firstly, the conditions under which they were granted have been reversed, or secondly, there's proven evidence of abuse. My government came to know that Ghana had entered into a cooperation agreement with the United States of America in 1998, 2000, and under the government of my predecessor in 2015. We were satisfied that the conditions which necessitated the agreement, namely the creeping threat to the peace of the region, had not disappeared. If anything, the threat had increased and therefore the need had arisen for continuing with our cooperation. No suggestion had ever been made that the United States of America had abused 
any of the privileges or concessions granted under any of these agreements. And it would have thus been a, a deemed an unfriendly act to attempt to deny them any concession granted them under these agreements. How could anyone who has been in government and run the administration of this nation feign ignorance of the conditions under which Ghanaian troops undertake peacekeeping operations or the conditions under which our co country has collaborated with major international institutions? It is difficult to understand that such people, knowing what they do know, would go about so blatantly to confuse people and go so, so far as calling for the overthrow of our democracy. A democracy that has become the beacon of good governance in Africa. A democracy that has survived for a quarter of a century and encompassed even the most irresponsible episodes of ill governance in a state of unity and stability. A democracy that has provided the framework for systematic developments in our social and economic welfare and assured us of the longest uninterrupted period of stable constitutional governance in our history? Surely, this is the kind of cynical manipulation by reckless self-seekers, which in the fullness of time, the people of Ghana will acknowledge and condemn. And I'm sure that as the facts become clear and widely available, and as the people come to terms with the evidence, they will reject the falsehood and deliberate attempts to destabilize our peaceful country. Truth is sacrosanct. So let me state with the clearest affirmation that Ghana has not offered a military base and will not offer a military base to the United States of America. Indeed, the United States of America has not made any request for such consideration. And consistent with our established foreign policy, we will not consider any such request. I will never be the president that will compromise or sell the sovereignty of our country. I respect deeply the memory of the great patriots who sacrifice and toil brought about our independence and freedom. Let us rise above them and build the Ghana of our destiny, the land of freedom, justice, progress, and prosperity. May God bless us all. And share this video with friends and family to support the channel.